primitive laparoscopy instruments. Um, just starting from this end, um, you can do uh, create pneumoperitoneum in um, two ways. One is the close technique, where you use a various needle, uh, which is a very thin um, needle which you initially put to um, create pneumoperitoneum. Or um, very commonly, um, we use what is called as uh, an open technique, where you actually uh, do a cut down on the skin um, and the umbilicus and the underlying tissue to enter the peritoneal cavity and then put uh, a trocar um, in to insufflate. Uh, the advantage of that technique is that you avoid uh, vascular uh, injury uh, um, almost completely uh, and also reduce the risk uh, of bowel injury to an extent, uh, though there are randomized controlled trials which dispute that. Um, though uh, it does make identification of bowel injury easier. So you use uh, these coccus forceps, um, uh, uh, dissecting um, forceps like this, and sometimes a little to help you elevate the umbilicus as you do this uh, cut down. Uh, this is a uterine uh, manipulator which is used to insert into the cervix and the uterine cavity to help uh, you elevate the uterus anti-vert or retrovert um, or move the uterus to one side or the other to, um, to enable the, the surgeon to visualize uh, the pelvic uh, spaces to speak of the, the UV pouches, the pouch of Douglas uh, and also the adnexa clearly. Now as you can, these do come in different sizes. Uh, this is a fixed length, assuming a fixed length to the cervical canal but obviously there are um, disposable uh, uterine manipulator, manipulator which allows you to adjust the length of this with a rubber bone. Uh, just starting on uh, the scent, this is a, a very commonly used uh, laparoscopic uh, forceps. As you can see laparoscopic forceps are quite long uh, because as uh, a length of it has to remain outside the patient's body to obtain leverage as you as you manipulate and that is why they are quite long as opposed to open instruments um, they have a, a handle um, a jaw uh, and also the ability to rotate uh, the jaw uh, for economic purposes this is a, a Maryland forceps very fine uh, very good at picking up tissue very precisely this is a very commonly used um, uh, instrument uh, laparoscopic forceps. Uh, it's called a uh, Johan with uh, a J. Uh, Johan's uh, forceps atraumatic and um, can pick up bowel and other tissues or tube safely without damaging it. Um, it has got um, a handle and also the ability to, there is a ratchet which grips tissue and also a lock which allows you to, to release the ratchet if necessary. Uh, the tips uh, do rotate like a Maryland uh, with a rotating ring in the handle. Uh, this is another your hand. Uh, this is a laparoscopic scissors. Uh, in this hospital, we use uh, disposable scissor tips, uh, which are single use, which are attached to the tip, uh, and this uh, can be connected to um, monopolar uh, cautery. Uh, which allows you to uh, deliver monopolar current to enable to, to use either unblended or cutting current or uh, blended um, coagulating current. Uh, this is a, another laparoscopic grasper uh, which is more traumatic, uh, particularly useful uh, to hold uh, the walls of the ovary um, to obtain a biopsy or during cystectomy. Uh, ovarian cystectomy for example, so an instrument with the, with the tooth at the end. Uh, this is uh, not very commonly used by gynecologists, uh, but uh, quite useful at accept, uh, applying clips. Um, if you want to, for example, clip the uterine arteries um, temporarily during a myomectomy to reduce the blood flow to the, the fibroid, Useful for gynecology, but uh, general surgeons 
uh, use it to apply clips onto the cystic duct um, and also the cystic artery uh, during a laparoscopy called a cystectomy. Um, very useful instrument. Thank you. That's lovely.